Are watts or current more important? This question comes from Bill in Chattanooga, Tennessee, along with that choo-choo. <laughs> there are a number of very high-end amplifiers that are rated at very low power in watts, less than 100 watts per channel. Most are tube amps, but there are many that are solid state as well. Many of these are priced as much or more than other amps that have 500 watts, 1,000 watts, or even more. While promoting one of these low power amps, my audio dealer told me it's not watts that's important, it's current, and that a low wattage, high current amp can have more bass slam and dynamics than a much higher powered amplifier. I don't understand this, and I am not sure that I buy it. I've always thought that watts and current were pretty much the same thing. Can you explain this and tell your viewers if this is true? Well, uh, no, <laughs> it isn't true. So either you misunderstood the dealer or the dealer didn't know what he was talking about because he's, he's sort of right, but he's mostly wrong. Watts are an expression of power and wattage is, well, how we calculate it is current times voltage. Current as expressed in amps. Amps times volts equals watts, right? So in order to have, oh, uh, 100 watts, you need so many volts coming out of the amplifier and enough current to maintain those watts. That's what you need. And that'll give you a certain number of watts. So one interesting thing, uh, most of you probably don't know, one horsepower is equal to 750 watts. Bet you didn't know that. So an amplifier that has 750 watts of power is equivalent to one horsepower, which is probably less than your Briggs and Stratton, <laughs> probably less than your weed whacker for God's sakes. But it, it's still, it's enough to drive, it's enough to drive speakers. Here's what I think your dealer probably meant. It isn't the wattage so much in an amplifier that is going to determine bass response. It has more to do with the amplifier's output impedance, its damping factor, its ability to deliver current into varying impedances. That's probably what he was trying to get across, or someone had told him and he sort of got it. I, you know. So if a woofer is being driven by an amplifier and the amplifier is putting out X number of volts into X number of ohms of impedance, let's, let's say the nominal impedance for the loudspeaker is four ohms. And let's just say we're dealing with a woofer. Now that woofer is a four ohm woofer. But if you look at its impedance curve, it goes like this. I mean, it's got, at, at one point, at resonance, the impedance of the woofer goes way up and it becomes very difficult to put power into the speaker. And so, uh, in, into the driver. Anyway, it's not worth getting into all of that. But, one of the reasons that tube amplifiers typically have wimpy bass, and maybe this is where it came from, is the fact that most tube power amplifiers with tube output stages have transformers, are not capable of putting out low impedances so that when your speaker dips down at, to too low of a frequency, it just loses voltage, and hence you lose watts. And that's because it didn't put out enough current. Well, it just, it just can't. So I think that's kind of where it came from. But on the face of it, no, he's incorrect. But I think that's what he's getting at. So yeah, you want to make sure that you have a high damping factor, which will tell you how well the amplifier can control the woofer. And you want to be able to have an amplifier with good current reserves and low output impedance. It's impedance that's going to get you. Okay, thanks for the question. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.